Chapter 6 Supreme Truth Uttam Satya Whenever discussion is held on supreme truth normally truthful speech itself is understood as supreme truth in the name of satya dharma songs of truthful speech are often sung it is said that one should speak the truth and should never tell a lie none trusts the liar in business also if one's credibility is established once it is established forever Later on, nobody bothers even if he starts charging at double the rate. Just think whether this sermon is for speaking the truth or for looting in the name of truth. The purpose of this discussion is to draw attention to the fact that when we do not understand even the real purpose of truthful speech, the talk of supreme truth is a far away thing. The common people may be understanding truthful speech to be the same as supreme truth, but what surprises one is the fact that even the erudite scholars who have been delivering lectures in Satya Dharma for many years are not able to go ahead of truthful speech. In Janagam, too, truthful speech has also been described as Satya Dharma from empirical point of view, and much light has been thrown on it because it has got its own importance and utility. But when we think deeply from real standpoint, there appears to be much difference in truthful speech and supreme truth. Supreme truth and truthful speech both appear to be totally two distinct and different things. One should bear in mind that what we are concerned with here is the discussion of Satya Dharma which is included in the ten religions with supreme forbearance, supreme modesty, supreme straightforwardness, supreme holiness, etc. as described in Janagam. A threadbare analysis of Satya Dharma is being attempted here in the aforesaid reference only. Gandhi ji has also accepted truth as being above the limits of speech. He identifies truth with God. Wherever discussion about search for truth or adoration of truth takes place, assuredly search of truthful speech is not our concern. Rather, some such important and implicit truth is in our mind, which is adorable and worth taking shelter of. The truth adored by and providing shelter to philosophers and metaphysicians cannot be simply the spoken word. Under whose shelter dharma gets manifested, which could be the source of infinite bliss and peace, such truth can only be some great conscious element or entity. It cannot be limited to words and speech. Limiting it to words and speech is in itself the biggest untruth. Acharyas have given thought to truthfulness of speech and the control of speech too, but they have discriminated it from satya dharma. In order that people may observe truthfulness in speech and keep control over speech, acharyas have discussed it in the following four different contexts: one, satyanuvrat; two, satya mahavrat; three, bhasha samiti; four, vachan gupti. Mainly to take a vow not to indulge in gross lies is satyanuvrat. Not to tell even a subtle lie and always speak. The truth is called Satya Mahavrat. Even when speaking the truth to abstain from hoards, displeasing, exaggerated truth, to speak beneficial, limited and pleasing words is Bhasha Samiti, whereas not to speak at all is Vachan Gupti. Thus we see that in Janagam to keep the vocal activity truthful and controlled, it has been circumvented at four places. The sum and substance is that if speaking is not essential, don't speak. If speaking is essential, one must speak salutary, few and pleasing words and that too absolutely true. If you cannot abstain from telling a small lie, at least don't tell a big lie. Here the vocal activity is circumvented from both the positive and negative sides. The positive side in the form of what to speak and how to speak is considered under Satyanuvrat, Satya Mahavrat and Bhasha Samiti and the negative side in the form of abstaining from speaking is considered under Vachan Gupti. Thus, to speak and not to speak, both the objects of the vocal activity have been covered here. What else remains after making the speech so much controlled on account of which you want to place Satya Dharma also within the bounds of speech? A great loss which has resulted due to limiting Satya Dharma in the four corners of speech only is that its quest itself has been lost, the acquisition of that which is being searched as possible. 
but how can that be acquired whose search is lost so long as truth is not understood search continues but when some false thing is believed to be true its quest is also stopped when search is stopped where lies the question of its acquirement the search of a murderer continues till someone is arrested for committing the murder if one who has not committed the murder is arrested for the crime of murder and is given punishment the real murderer will never be arrested the file is now closed because in the opinion of the world the murderer has already been arrested and punished what is the need for searching now when the search has been stopped it is impossible to find out the real culprit likewise when truthful speech is taken to be the supreme truth where does the question of searching real satya dharma arise the greatest loss that has occurred due to believing satya vachan to be satya dharma is that the quest for satya dharma itself is got lost what is satya dharma the inquisitive persons who do not know the answer to this will discover satya dharma some time or other because their search is on but for them who have assumed satya vachan to be satya dharma it is not possible to discover the truth anuvrat are observed by householders and not by saints mahavrat are practiced by saints and not by householders likewise bhasha samiti and vachan gupti are cherished by saints and not by householders Anuvrat, Mahavrat, Gupti and Samiti are fostered by householders and homeless saints but not by Siddhas, liberated souls and also not by vowless, right faith jeev whereas supreme forbearance etc. ten religions are found according to one's own spiritual status right from vowless, right faith souls up to the emancipated Siddhas. Speech is the modification of matter substance and truth is the religion of soul the religion of the soul resides in soul and not in body and speech in siddha the possessors of all the religions the existence of the religions of the soul is necessarily to be found for wherein etc the 10 religions including satya dharma are found in siddha but they are devoid of satya vachan hence it is established that from nishchay point of view Satya vachan is not satya dharma. One question may arise here. Are anuvrat mahavrat not religion? Are samiti gupti also not religion? Acharya Uma Swami has included anuvrat and mahavrat in Tattvartha Sutra in Asraf chapter. Although from empirical point of view at some places these have been termed as dharma, but how can those which themselves are asravs and cause of bondage be called dharma from real point of view gupti samiti are also not that satya dharma which is being discussed here the thing worth noting is that acharyas have described the 10 religions separately besides gupti samiti etc if all are to be treated as religion what is the purpose of describing these separately as dharma from whatever point of view these have been separately mentioned as dharma from the same point of view i would like to say that all of them are not any of the religion out of these 10 religions or one can say those are not that satya dharma which is being discussed here speaking more clearly from nishchay point of view the speech has no concern with supreme truth because speaking of truth by anuvratis and mahavratis will be covered under satya anuvrat and satya mahavrat speaking beneficial few and pleasing words will get covered in bhasha samiti and not speaking in vachan gupti now no such form of vocal activity is left out which could be included in satya dharma if speaking the truth is treated to be satya dharma then satya dharma will not be found in siddhas because they don't speak the truth they don't speak at all how does therefore the question of speaking truth and lies arise here is speaking necessary for the possessors of satya dharma can the person who observes silence throughout his life not be treated as the possessor of satya dharma to escape from the situation if it is said that of course they do not speak the truth but they do not tell lie also therefore they possess satya dharma this would mean that speaking truth is not satya dharma but not to tell lie is proof to be satya dharma but this argument is also not logical because if not telling lie is treated to be satya dharma 
then the one sensed living beings who are without vocal activity shall have to be treated as the possessors of satya dharma for they also never tell lies when they are not endowed with the power of speaking where does the question of telling lies arise thus we see that neither speaking truth the satya dharma nor not telling lies it is therefore quite obvious that satya dharma which is being discussed here neither consists in speaking the truth nor in speaking beneficial few and pleasing words it also does not consist in keeping mum which amounts to negation of speaking because all these are the characteristics of the vocal activity and satya dharma with which we are concerned here is the religion of the soul the true religions do not disappear after their perfect manifestation supreme forbearance etc religions exist in siddha state of the soul but anuvrat and mahavrat are found in the particular worldly state only they may be the religions of that state only but not of the soul a householder takes oath by observing anuvrat but when the same householder accepts muni dharma the life of an ascetic he takes oath to observe mahavrat anuvrat are then left out automatically how can that be religion which falls off anuvrat mahavrat gupti samiti all these are temporary halting places not the destination neither achievable nor the final aim the final aim is the state of siddha and supreme forbearance etc religions existing in that state too are the real religions of the soul now we have to comprehend that satya dharma which is not found in all wrong faith souls of the four channels of embodied existence from one sensed creatures up to five sensed living beings but which is found in all right faith souls as per their level of spiritual rise right from wowless right faith embodied souls up to siddhas sat is the intrinsic property of a substance soul is also a substance hence it is sat swabhavi characterized by sat the tranquil attachmentless modification which is manifested in the soul by taking shelter of sat swabhavi atma is called satya dharma from nishchay point of view the word uttam prefixed with satya indicates the absence of wrong belief and the presence of right belief the acquirement of right belief is impossible without the annihilation of wrong belief so long as this jeev does not understand the true nature of a substance particularly that of the soul substance the attainment of satya dharma is not at all possible the question of the development and enrichment of a thing does not arise if it has not even been generated without self realization right comprehension of the soul substance is not possible for the annihilation of wrong belief and acquirement of right belief only true knowledge of the essential non self elements is necessary but as regards the self its realization and knowledge both are essential without self realization right knowledge of the self is not possible uttam satya means passionlessness along with right belief and right knowledge speaking the truth is not at all satya dharma from nishchay point of view simply knowing the truth and believing the truth are also not real satya dharma because simply knowing and believing are respectively the modifications of knowledge and belief attributes whereas satya dharma is the modification of conduct attribute that is is one of its phases supreme forbearance etc ten religions are nothing but different aspects of charitra itself This point has already been explained in detail in the chapter of general discussion about ten religions. Hence, let alone the talk of truthful speech, right belief and right knowledge too are not satya dharma, but the state of passionlessness emerging in conjunction with right belief and right knowledge is assuredly supreme truth from nishchay point of view. Niyam is the name of conduct. Elucidating niyam, Acharya Kundakund writes in Niyam Sar. सुह असुह वयणरयणम रायादिभावारणम किच अपाणम जो जायदि तस्य दुर्नियमम हवेणियमा हि हु अवॉइडिंग गुड एंड बैड फॉर्म्स ऑफ स्पीच एंड इम्प्योर थॉट्स सच एज अटैचमेंट एटसेट्रा एंड क्रॉसेस इन द सेल्फ सोल अचीव्स नियम अनडाउटेबली 
Here too, religion in the form of conduct is stated to be the avoidance of vocal activity and passionate thoughts, etc. Satya Dharma is also an aspect of conduct. Therefore, it should be in the form of avoidance of speech and passionate feelings. Sat means that which exists. To know, believe a substance in the form in which it exists is the right belief. To describe it as it is, is the true speech. And the manifestation of passionlessness in conjunction with the right knowledge and belief about the nature of the self is Satya Dharma. The existence of Asat is a relative aspect. From Jeev's point of view, Ajeev is Asat and from Ajeev's point of view, Jeev is Asat. Because a substance from its Svachatashtai point of view is Sat and from Parchatashtai point of view is Asat. As a matter of fact, whatever is there in the universe, all that is Sat. But people say, in the world the kingdom of falsehood alone is seen, truth appears nowhere. This is really the defect of one's vision, not of the nature of the existing things. That alone is called Satya which has existence in the world. Let us now ponder over what is truth and what is untruth. This is a jar. This statement indicates three types of existences. It accepts the existence of the substance called jar, the existence of knowledge that knows the jar, and the existence of the word jar. All those things which exist are true. If these three, that is the substance, its knowledge and the indicative word, do not differ, then the knowledge is true. The word is true and so far as the substance is concerned, it is invariably true. But when the substance, knowledge and speech do not get unified, example one speaks the word cloth and points out towards jar, then the speech would become false. Likewise, if the jar is in front of us and we know it as cloth, then the knowledge would become false. But in any case, the substance is not going to be false. It can never be false. It exists always on its own by its own nature and never by the support of others. So it is clear that untruth is not in the substance but it lies in the knowledge that knows it, in the belief that believes it or in the speech that spells it out. Hence I can say that except in the knowledge, belief and speech of an ignorant soul there is no existence of untruth in the universe, everywhere there is the kingdom of truth only. As a matter of fact, the world is not yellow, but because we are affected by jaundice, the world appears to be yellow. Similarly, in the world there is no existence of untruth, but untruth has entered our vision so deeply that it appears in the universe. The world is not to be reformed. We have to reform our own vision and knowledge. The truth is not to be newly generated. Satya is already there. Whatever exists, exists in true form only. Only it is to be known and believed correctly. Knowing and believing correctly is itself the acquisition of truth. And to achieve the state of passionlessness by acquiring the truth of the soul and overpowering attachment aversion is Satya Dharma. If I utter the word cloth to denote cloth, it is truth. But if I use the word jar to denote cloth, then it is untruth. By my telling jar, the cloth will not become jar. It will remain cloth. Where did the lie enter into the substance? Lie has entered into the speech. Likewise, if the cloth is known as jar, then the knowledge would become false but not the substance. Where lies the fault of cloth if I believe, proclaim and know cloth is jar? The error lies in my knowledge or utterance. Mistake always happens in the knowledge or speech, not in the substance. The mistake should be corrected there where it lies. What is the advantage in trying uselessly to correct it where it does not lie? The spot is on the face but it appears in the mirror. If someone cleans the mirror, the spot will not be removed. Rather, by cleaning the mirror, the spot will be seen more clearly. To remove the spot, the face should be washed. People go close to the photographer and say, Please snap a beautiful photograph of mine. But gentleman, says the photographer, the photograph will be good or bad according to your face. How could it become more beautiful? You want me to snap a photograph or a beautiful photograph? If your face is not beautiful, how could the photograph be beautiful? As a matter of fact, a thing in its reality is beautiful. But where does the world believe this? 
if someone has got only one eye and if in the photograph both the eyes are shown will the photograph become beautiful it may be called beautiful but it will not be a real one according to me a thing in its natural form alone is beautiful satya is the name of knowing the thing exactly the same as it is satya is not the name of knowing it good or bad making division of good or bad in the substance is the function of attachment aversion the function of knowledge is to know the thing as it is we forget a thing after keeping it somewhere safely and then say that the particular thing is lost but what is the reality the thing is lost or its knowledge is lost the thing is still lying there where it was kept not the thing but its knowledge is to be searched out untruth is either in the utterance or in the knowledge not in the substance there is no existence of untruth in the substance the substance cannot be made identical to our knowledge and speech nor is there any need to make it so what is necessary is to make our knowledge and speech congruous to the nature of the substance when the knowledge and speech become identical to the substance those will also be true when the soul acquires the passionless modification by taking shelter of its own self it will be enriched by the wealth of satya dharma the extent of enrichment by satya dharma will depend on the degree of self realization for truthfulness of speech one will have to make one's speech identical to the nature of the substance for speaking the truth one should know the truth how can the truth be spoken without knowing it to many people this seems to be very easy because according to them truth is nothing but stating what is seen known and heard on this very basis they say that it is easy to speak the truth and it is difficult to tell a lie for telling a lie planning is necessary all the persons in the house have got to be trained to ensure that the lie may not get disclosed to support one lie thousands of lies have got to be told even then the doubt of its getting disclosed persists if you want to tell a lie tell anything but for speaking the truth a great responsibility comes on your shoulder the truth cannot be spoken without thinking hence before speaking the truth it is essential to know the truth this becomes more important in the purposeful elements though even a lie told about worldly affairs is also the cause of inauspicious bondage yet the lie about the essential purposeful elements is a much greater sin it causes infinite transmigration and is extremely harmful to the self and to others therefore if the right knowledge of the nature of the substances is not attained it is better not to speak but to keep mum instead of uttering without thinking in the way to liberation speaking the truth is not compulsory but to know the truth to believe in the truth and to attain satya dharma in the form of passionless state of the self evolved by taking shelter of the self truth is essential because without speaking emancipation is possible but without knowing believing and absorbing into the truth full self its attainment is not possible it will make no difference if after knowing the truth one does not speak at all throughout one's life but without knowing it the life would be lost fire will remain hot even if someone may not say so for fire to remain hot it is not essential that someone should proclaim it to be hot likewise if someone does not know that it is hot it will still remain hot similarly the true nature of a substance depends neither on a statement about it nor on its knowledge it is always there the knowledge which knows it in its true nature is true knowledge the belief which believes it as it is is true belief the speech which describes it as it is is true speech and the conduct which puts it into practice accordingly is true conduct we have in fact forgotten the real truth how can then true knowledge belief conduct and speech which could be evolved only by taking its shelter get manifested in our life the eternal inner self having knowledge and bliss as its basic quality is the ultimate truth the knowledge belief and its passionless conduct based on it is the religion of supreme truth the present age is the age of compromise In over enthusiasm some people talk of compromise even in the matter of fundamental reality of substances but 
what is necessary is the understanding of the true nature of the substance not of making compromise where is the room for making compromise about the nature of the substance and who are we to make compromise about it in the state of compromise both the parties have to bow down the basis of compromise is not truth but the strength one possesses in a compromise the point of view of a powerful person prevails and not that of a truthful one how is the fire cold or hot this may be worth knowing but where lies the point of compromise in it moreover when and where is your compromise acceptable to the true nature of the substance dharma is the name of correct understanding about the nature of the substance truth needs no compromise the need is to understand it as it is truth and peace are attainable by understanding them not by any type of compromise in this miracle loving world who bothers about the truth who has the urge for attaining it who cares to assess its value the world salutes them who show some miracle for the glorifiers of untruth the attainment of truth is not only difficult but rather impossible satya is attained only by them who have deep interest in it know its significance and have enthusiasm for its attainment it is impossible that one in whom deep desire to attain the truth is awakened is convinced about its supremacy is intensely devoted to achieve it and makes introverted endeavor for achieving it may not be able to achieve it i now take repose with the divine spirit that all people be endowed with satya dharma in the form of passionless modification under the shelter of the eternal true nature of the self soul